Are you prepared for the big one? Link's not. I'm Nick from British Columbia, Canada. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Blue Microphones, maker of this wonderful mic that we have been using for a long time, the mouse. Creator of the sound, that is G double M. Go to bluemic.com to check out their amazing products. Just really. listen, just listen when I get close like this, just how amazing you might think that I would be because if you, of this if, voice. If you weren't looking at it. Oh, I mean because of this microphone. <laughs> You smell that, Rhett? It is the smell of freshness. That is a brand new week. Thanks for joining us. And legitimately, I can say the smell of freshness. Thank you to the mythical beast that mailed us to our P.O. Box air fresheners. We're using them, baby. Thank you. tell you right now. And we're calling you baby. Calling you baby because it's Monday. And it smells fresh thanks to you. Okay. We moved to California recently. We've established that. For those of you who watch Good Mythical Morning on a regular basis. We it's almost a year now. That if you can use recently loosely. Yes. And um, we moved from North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that you worry about when you live in North Carolina, like tornadoes, hurricanes. And there are certain things that you worry about when you live in California. Mudslides, uh, fires, wildfires. Coyotes. Coyotes. People who can't drive. There's a lot of those. Mm-hmm. And earthquakes. And there has been a lot of talk about the big one. If you watch any kind of television at all, especially if you watch Discovery Channel or National Geographic, there, every couple of days there's a special on the big one or the probability of the next big earthquake and what's going to happen and how devastating it's going to be. And there's all kinds of talk amongst the people out here in the Los Angeles area. Angelinos, we have established that's what they call those people. Mm -hmm. Not Angelocytes, as Link tried to call them, which sounds like a parasite. Yes, you could do that. You could call them that. Um, that earthquakes are a big deal because they talk about And you about need everywhere. to be prepared. People are like, do you, do you have an earthquake kit? Have you got your earthquake kit? And, you know, ironically, since we've been out here, we have not experienced any earthquakes that I know of. No, no. But back no. home in North Carolina, they had one when we were here. At, maybe it's us. Maybe us coming out here redirected the epicenter of, of U.S. earthquakes to where we were from. That's called egocentric thinking, Link. That did you think that we had something to do with the earthquakes well, in the I, world? I would call it ego seismic thinking. Oh, that's good. There's and a new word. Put that in the urban dictionary. Go! I, I will gladly accept being an ego seismic. Wherever I go, earthquakes flee. You know, I should be getting paid for that. I think that would actually be anti ego seismic. Put that in the urban dictionary. Oh my goodness. California has a 99.7% chance of having a 6.7 magnitude earthquake or larger in the next 30 years. This is like a study that was done in 2008. And these things are difficult to predict, but it's based on the activity of the fault, the San Andreas fault, and some other faults. 6.7 out of a scale of what? 10 or 100? I think it's 10 is the Richter scale. Uh, but I think every time you go up a point, the intensity goes up by 10. It isn't a... Ge it is a geometric scale. It's not a linear scale. So geoseismic. So scale. basically, this means that it's very likely that if we stay out here for a long time, we will experience an earthquake. And the big one, the the quote unquote big one, which is the theoretical seven point eight magnitude or greater, oh. uh, that could happen. There is a forty six percent chance that that will happen in the next thirty years. So you know. Half and half. And again, this is all, it could happen right now. So we're going to, it could happen right now, or it could happen 30 years from now. It could happen. Or right now. Or, but it's not happening right or now. Or right now. And the question is. What if it happened right now? That well, would be, that, at least we'd be ca catching it on tape. But this would definitely go viral. This video would go viral, because as it stands, this video is not going to go viral. But, it, but it's going to be helpful to some people. It's funny, when I think of an earthquake hitting, like if it happened right now, I picture it, there being a crack that would form in between my legs. I always because you've picture, been watching lots of cartoons and movies. I always picture the crack between my feet. <laughs> Don't. That's and then careful. I, I thought so, you were about to say crack between your legs. <laughs> <laughs> if, you're, if you're picturing that on a regular basis, you're definitely... I always picture the crack between my legs. Some kind of ego, crackocentric. <laughs> crack egocentric. I, no, I always picture Woo. the crack between my feet, and so immediately I have to make a choice. Which side? Left or right. And you know, what if what if I have family members on one side and I have other family members on the other you side? You form a link bridge and to tell the family to cross over to one side. 
That's what you do. Cross over, use me as a bridge. I, I, you probably won't have time to make those kind of plants. Uh, but you do, you can make some plans. And in all seriousness, we're making plans right now. In all seriousness, there is, there are some things that you could do. And this is, I mean, this show is sort of semi-educational. Uh, take it what you will, but we and know semi-pathetic. There's, there's some of you, <laughs> there's some of you out there who are not in danger of an earthquake. Uh, so this is purely for entertainment purposes, or if you ever visit an area that is earthquake prone, because there is something that you should do. Now, all the reading right. that I've been doing about this, because I've sort of been uh, the research person for this particular thing. Last week, you researched binaural beats. You did a great job on that, by the way. And it, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sleeping like a baby, but I can't say that I'm listening to the, uh, to the washing. And I have been coming up with all kinds of creative ideas, but I'm keeping them to myself because you don't, don't appreciate the process. Well, okay. Then I'm not going to share with you the keys to earthquake preparedness. Because I'm the one who did the research on this. Yeah. They say the thing that you should do, first of all, is you should get to an interior wall. If, if you're near an exterior wall, get away from big windows. And, and this is in preparation for an earthquake, like at any time leading up to one. You should always walk along the interior <laughs> walls of your house. Just to, No, this is when an earthquake happens. Okay. Uh, but if there is a large desk or table in the area, you should get underneath it and you should hold on to it for dear life. I'm looking around. The only table we have is this flimsy card table with a hole in it so the blue mic can come off through it. Th th this will not work. This is not adequate. I don't know if we have anything that's in here that's adequate. I would think that we would just go out this door right here and get out because we're so close to the door. Unless the door like jammed or something. And then we would just sort of just huddle. We would just kind of hold each other and huddle. <laughs> we bear hug each other outside? Just Yeah. No, in what? inside. Oh, okay. What if you formed a table and I got underneath you? I might do that for you. You're a good friend. I'm bigger than you. Agreed. I it is an agreement. I'm heavier. Uh, so finding a big object, not the one that can fall on you, but one that you can kind of get under and hold on to. That's the way to kind of get through the earthquake. But more so what they talk about out here is what you should have on hand. Now, first of all, if there's a big earthquake, the main thing that's going to happen, it isn't like, you know, some people will die. You know, there will be some things that will collapse and that kind of thing. But that's not really the problem. If the cracks the between your feet, you're going to die. Probably that if if that happens, you you might die. If they're shaking, but you don't see the crack, then you you've got a chance. But the real problem is the aftermath. What happens in an area this populated, this densely populated, mm. with water that's being pumped in from out of state? All of a sudden, there's going to be a water sh shortage. There's going to be uh, fires around. There's going to be electricity is going to be out. Which the main thing that I'm worried about is the water because it, you know the weather's so mild. It's not like we're going to freeze or we're going to burn up or anything like that. But so you got to drink water. You got to have water to survive until there can, people can kind of come in and that kind of thing. So the main thing to have is is water. I think they say like five gallons, uh, no, a gallon a day per person or something like that. We'll put the actual suggested fact at the bottom of the screen just in case I'm wrong. But th this brings me to a greater point, which is I've been thinking about this. Actually, I, I already got my water. I've got adequate water supply oh, already, good. clean water. How much water do you have? Well, I don't know how many gallons it is, but I probably need to, to up it a little bit because in the same way that every time we go somewhere and we have to pay cash for something, you're like, hey man, you got any cash? And then I end up paying. And you, so here's what's gonna happen. Okay, so this is, okay, this is about me now. When the big one comes, my theory is, I'm gonna have all my, listen, people, the people who have prepared, the people who are the resources, they become targets. I mean, I'm gonna be fending people off. They're trying to climb into my backyard over my fence. I'm gonna to have to arm my, my children to keep them out. Are we talking about our earthquakes or the zombie apocalypse? If it's a big enough earthquake, we could have serious problems and I'm gonna have these resources. And I know what's gonna happen. There's gonna be all these people trying to get into my house and take my resources. And then I'm gonna look out there and you and your family are gonna be amongst them because you're not gonna be prepared. And you know what? I'm gonna treat you like an outsider. Because if I let you and your family in, then I gotta let somebody else's family in. So, so let me get this straight. During an earthquake, you'll gladly become the table with which I huddle underneath and save, my life is saved. But then in the, in the long run, I'm on my own. Once Teach a man to fish, will you? Once the earthquake stops, you're on your own. I will protect you during the shaking, but once the earthquake is over, you gotta go take care of your family. You gotta be prepared. You gotta have the water purification tablets, and you gotta have the canned goods and the freeze-dried food and the flashlights and the battery-powered radios. But, but you're gonna want company. If you- Just get a little bit more. I mean, you, if you bring stuff with you, I'd be glad to let your family live out here in the backyard. But from, from you know, the, the, the four mile 
hike from my house to your house. You might, you probably won't survive I, that. I, I wouldn't make it if I was carrying, you know, foodstuffs with me. They're light. You have a backpack. You, but that, it, 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 I would be attacked by a by a zombie. There's no zombies. That's that's not the zombie part. Is not that's not true. Well, by the time I get here, I'll be like, listen, I had water and I had foodstuffs, but then you know it was it was lifted from me. And all I've got is all I've got is myself. I can offer my company. I okay. can offer conversation. If you want to pay me sometime today, I will store your earthquake kit at my house. So if your family makes it to my house, well, why don't I store? Why don't you buy it? Buy both of them. But since I have a garage, and you just have this as your garage, uh, I'll store both of our stuff at, at my house. Because then I have so to I make it to your house. But I have the storage. But I have a bigger backyard. We yeah. can't go inside the house. It could fall at any moment. We have to stay out here in the backyard. Huh. Got to be prepared is the bottom line. And if you have a friend like Link who's a moocher, who doesn't do his own preparing, you got to how much how much to food, the curb. How much food do you have right now? Well, I haven't put gotten the food part. You don't even have food. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even have that much water. No, I have a good amount of water. I have enough water to make it a few days. Spin the wheel, spin the wheel. Where it lands, it lands at will. It'll tell us how to end this episode of Good Mythical Morning. It still smells fresh. It's so pleasing. Teacher and student. This is when one of us is teaching the other how, right. how to end the episode. Who wants to be the teacher? I don't, I don't care. I'll be the, I'll be the teacher. Okay, class, get out your get out your pencil and paper. It's time it's time for a fill in the blank test. Are you ready? Question number one: Are you ready to end this episode of Good Mythical Morning? Don't look on someone else's paper. Do you want me? To, is this a verbal test? No, I ask the questions and you just put the answers. I put yes. Don't don't tell me. I can see what you put. Make sure you fill in completely the circle. I'm the just, Scantron can't, it can't see that. I'm using my finger. It get, you have to really fill the whole thing. Don't go outside of the line because it, it, it really confuses the Scantron. What's the Scantron? Are you going to be back tomorrow to watch more Good Mythical Morning? Put, put yes on that one. Completely fill the, the oval. Completely fill it in. I'm going to wrap your hand with a, some post-it notes. See you tomorrow. That's what teachers used to do. They used to wrap hands with rulers and then they replaced it with post-it notes. What are you trying to hit me?